Well, we've just seen Aventura go out from the port of Middelfart between Jutland and Fyn in, in Denmark, central Denmark. The vessel really starts my heart turning because the sound of her engine takes me back 50 years till when I was a very young man and first went to sea on a vessel that was not unlike her and that's when I met my wife. Coming here is a bit of a nostalgic trip as well because three years ago I was here and I shot some videos which possibly you'll have seen. There's one of Chris, the foreman, in the boat and shipyard here corking a deck which was a nice video and there was a lot of good feedback about that so I thought I'd come back and see what was going on and um, as I sailed into the little harbour I saw this wheelhouse here uh, sitting on the dock and I was tickled to death by that you know because uh, it's actually been taken off another Baltic trading vessel which is which is behind the camera at the moment and uh, there's a new one being built and when you look at this wheelhouse you realize there is just so much work in it not just any old carpenter can do this look at the way the the shear is being picked up by the little cabin roof there the doors are following the shear nothing is square everything is everything is curved and going in all sorts of directions and that's the wonder isn't it of proper shipbuilding and boat building now the person who is doing this job is not some hairy bloke it's it's Emma Hastrup who has been apprenticed here for some years now. I met Emma very briefly last night and I was absolutely fascinated to see what she was doing. She was really stuck into this job and I'm going to go and talk to her in a minute and so are we. So I don't think I'll say any more. I think I'll go and go, I'll go and find Emma right now. Well we're inside the wheelhouse. I've, I've run Emma down to her workplace yeah. right now and, uh, and we, we get to talk to her, which is absolutely brilliant. I've dragged her away from her bandsaw over there and, and, and uh, she's going to give us five minutes of her time. Now, Emma, yeah. you didn't do this straight from school, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. I uh, went to the university at first, actually, and uh, then I dropped out and then I worked at a kindergarten for a couple of years. Yeah. And I was really happy to do that. And uh, I found out that uh, I want to do something with my hands because it, it makes me happy and yeah. um, so I ended up here. So what led you to the boating thing? I mean mm, I've has... always been sailing. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I love the world around it. And has it always been traditional craft or, or, or not? Mm, I like traditional craft. Yeah. Did you did your family sail? Did you grow up around? Uh, yeah, my grandparents had a boat. I went out sailing every summer yeah. with them. And was that a wooden boat, or was it a...? No, it wasn't a wooden boat. No. This is the point, this is the thing, you see, because so many people go sailing in, yeah. in, in modern yachts, and they have a jolly good time, and they're mm -hmm. excellent yachts, and they, they, they do very well. Yeah. But there's only a, so many of us that get gripped by the, the feel and the smell and the, the, yeah. the atmosphere of the yeah. old boats. Yeah. So yeah. how did that come about? What, what, what led you to it? Was there some moment of truth or, 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 or anything or did it just happen over time? I think it just happened over time. I mean, I like the old handcraft a lot and um, yeah, I, l I love working with wood. So, really? Uh, and did you work with wood before you came here? Uh, no, no I didn't. So you came here knowing nothing really? Uh, I tried it at school and uh, I really fell for it there. So uh, that's how I ended up okay. doing this. And how did the, um, what was the administration that led you to, to, to Middelfart? Because this, this is not your town, is it? No, it's not. I'm from Copenhagen. I see. And uh, it's the first time I've tried to live out of Copenhagen, outside of Copenhagen. And um, actually it was a teacher who called me and said that uh, Chris, my master, was looking for someone. And uh -huh. uh, then I uh, called him and uh, I came out to see it and I fell in love with the place, yeah. Well, well, well. So um, what sort of work did you do to start with? How did they lead you into it? Because this mm. is a responsible job that you're doing here. So. It is, and I'm not doing it alone. Um, Aren't you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought this was your project. <laughs> no, 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 it's not just mine. Okay. Um, I actually made a, um, what's it called, a dock? The place... Uh, we walk on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The dock. Uh, yeah, yeah, the dock. Yeah, yeah. I, I made that of uh, one of the boats that's lying out here. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was my first job, and I was doing it all winter, and um, yeah, I think it was my favorite job as well. Was it? Cause, yeah, it was. Because seeing that you can make someone something like that, that was uh, 
that was really eye-opening to me. Yeah. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So there's more in it than just just doing the job with your hands. There's some sort of creative thing going on there. Yeah, there is for sure. It's really nice to create something that yeah you can see and feel and somebody can use. What are your favourite tools? What do you enjoy using? Mm, oh, oh, that's a tough one. Well, it is because there's yeah. so many power yeah, tools now, aren't there? But you, but you still have the slick, the chisel, yeah. don't you? And the Yo, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's some of the traditional ones, the one that's always been used. Maybe, yeah, maybe the chisel. Yeah. 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 But I think, I think maybe that's rich mood I'm in. <laughs> So you know, you some of them you have to use power, and it's it's yeah. good with if you've got some frustration or when I do something. Some days you just wanna like do small stuff. Yeah, hmm? yeah. What do you particularly like? I mean, there's uh, the, the, the thing about boats. There are tiny little intricate jobs, and there are yeah. great big jobs, bashing out great keels and making huge scarf joints and things. Yeah. And, and then there are these intimate joints in the in the, in the coach repair and. The, yeah. Mm, what I goes your way best? What floats your boat best with these things? Mm, I think I like the big job best because then you can see the most difference from when you started out. Yeah. And uh, it's really nice to see yeah. and create something big. Yeah. So it's ship writing rather than intricate furniture making that, that, that yeah. appeals. Yeah, I think so. I would yeah. say that. Right. And, um, you know, it's perceived to be a man's world, this. It is. Uh, how do you get on with that, really? Mm. I mean, it's an intimate question. It's probably rude to ask, but <laughs> no, how do you feel I about it? No, I think it's important to ask. Okay. Um, down here, we are not that many people, so I don't really feel it. And there's a lot of other women at the harbor yeah. doing other stuff. And um, I think it's important to get more women out in the field and doing handcraft work. And uh, yeah, I would really recommend that. Good. Mm. Good, good, yes. And, uh, I haven't had any trouble with it. When you have to pick up heavy stuff, you have things to help you with do, to do that. So it's not like you have to be extremely strong or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're not relying on some guy to come and help you. You can no. usually find a machine or, or... Yeah, I can do it all by myself. Brilliant. And, uh, that's really important because that, that's... A uh, hundred years ago, that might not have been the case. I, I think it's changed, yeah, because I think uh, in old times you had to like pick stuff up yourself and yeah, a lot of other things, so yeah, so there's nothing stopping women to go out now and do it. No. And uh, no. it would be really nice to see some females out here. <laughs> well, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, Actually, it would. interestingly, in America, um, yeah. I've spent a lot of time in America and oh. uh, um, I think women are ahead of Europe over yeah. there in this yeah. respect. On the east coast of America in the big museums there, there's mm. uh, Mystic Seaport Museum, yeah. you'll have heard of that. Yeah. They have, um, there's a lot of women working there and they're working on the boats and the ships. Okay. They're up on the yards singing yeah. out with the shanties and, 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 and encouraging people to go and yeah. do it and it's, uh, oh, it's great and nice. it seems quite natural. Yeah. Because because it's been going on for 30, 40 years. Yeah, so nobody is asking any questions about it. No, or, no. <laughs> no, not at all. So I think they're actually, uh, strange to say, I think they're ahead yeah. of us in this. Oh, um, maybe I should go visit them. <laughs> well, you'd love it, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they'd love to see you. That's, that, yeah. that, 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 that's for sure. Oh, we just saw um, the mate on the Aventura there. Yeah. Um, it was yeah. A, a young woman. and. Uh, Every inch a seaman. I was just watching her moving yeah. around the deck, and just perfect, yeah. you know, just great. And the skipper didn't even watch what he was doing. He just well, got on with his bit, and he knew she was doing it right. And yeah. that was, that's that, really nice. Yeah, yeah. A, real, a, a real pleasure to see. Mm. So look, um, yeah. sooner or later, the world's going to run out of old boats to restore. Yeah, yeah. Is if it? we if we don't learn how to like, what's it called? Maintain them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, look yeah. after them. Look after them, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so in the future, mm -hmm. you feel that there are enough traditional boats around to provide a, a, a solid future for somebody with your, mm -hmm. with your uh, skills and your training? I think there is, or maybe we're going to have to make some more new builds as well, because a lot of the old boats are dying out. 
Well, they are, aren't they? Yeah. They I mean, I've, I've done my time with old boats. I've owned, a, I've owned old boats. Yeah. I think my oldest boat was built in 1895. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I had a Colin Archer boat built in 1903 yeah. for many years, and I had a pilot cutter built in 1911. <laughs> so we know all about boats falling apart. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, and they do that. They do, but for us, the main thing is to, if you possibly can, to get them to sea. Yeah. Get some salt water on them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, not have them lying up all year round. But, um, yeah, I don't know how many wooden boats there's, there's left, actually. So. No. But hopefully enough. But you're confident yeah. there's enough? Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, Emma, thanks very much. I don't want to take up all your day because you've got no. so many things to do here. I do. I yeah, do. <laughs> so we'd better let you get on. But uh, it's yeah. very kind of you to stop and talk to us. And I hope, of course. I hope that just, just seeing you here, surrounded by the work yeah. you're doing and, uh, and in this wonderful place, might inspire some people. Yeah, I hope so too. It's, yeah. uh, it's a really nice job. It well, is. that would be a grand yeah. thing indeed. And thanks yeah. very much. It's great to meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet you too. Good show. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm on my way. Yeah.